So when we run configuration wizard to create a domain, the wizard is using a pre-built template to create our domain, to serve as the basis for our domain. And then the configuration wizard performs any customizations on top of that domain that was created from that default template. So if we had overridden the, the default admin server port and listen address, the configuration wizard would have modified the default values in the template and then deployed the template. So, so in our case, we're, we're going to use the default template that comes with WebLogic. So if we look in the lab guide, the lab guide has the, the fully qualified path to that template jar file. And so the syntax for the create domain command takes four parameters, at minimum four parameters. One, we specify the domain template. So if you're not familiar with Python, when you, and the syntax here is all Python, if you're not familiar with Python syntax, when you execute a function and you pass in parameters, parameters can be optional. So when you pass in all the parameters for a function, you don't need to qualify them with the name of the parameter. So for instance, if I wanted to, if I wanted to um, pass out a parameter for the username, I could simply just do this username, yeah, or actually web logic. However, if that wasn't the only argument, but that's the argument that I specify, that's the only argument that I specify, then I would have to qualify this with the name of the argument. And let's say that the argument's name is username equals, and then the value for that argument. So when we are passing in all the parameters for a, uh, a WLST function or any Python function, I don't need to qualify them with the name of the argument. So we can go ahead and enter in all the parameters for this command without qualifying them. So the first parameter is domain template. And this is the location of that default WebLogic template. And it's in the lab guide um, in, the, in the table for domain creation parameters. So that on my system, that's going to be Got to use the fully qualified paths here. So this is going to be quite long. So to create our domain, we're going to run this create domain command using the parameters that are specified in the lab guide. Now, when I'm typing out long commands in the inter interactive shell, I prefer to do them ahead of time in a text editor just because it's much simpler to edit um, and copy and paste from the editor if there's a problem with the command, if I fat fingered something. So what I've done is I'm using text wrangler, but you can use any text editor. And I've gone ahead and, and written out or typed out the command for create domain. And so I've specified the first parameter here is the location to the WLS.jar, which is the default weblog web logic domain jar file. And then the next parameter I'll highlight this here. This parameter is the domainder parameter, uh, and it specifies the location of the domain directory and the name of the domain to create. So I'm using the domain root, which has been the parent directory for all of our domains that we've worked with. And then the name of the domain is WLST underscore domain. And then the last two parameters are the credentials for the admin server that are going to get created. So we're going to use WebLogic and WebLogic123, which are the credentials, credentials we've been using all along. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this and paste it into my shell. Whoops. Didn't like the hard return there. Okay, so I'm going to copy, I'm going to copy the entire command. and paste it into my WebLogic shell. Okay, so when it returns with no errors, that means the domain was created. Okay, so now the domain is created, we can actually read the domain in an offline state. So we're not gonna connect to a running admin server since that's not running yet, but we can still manipulate the domain um, by reading the domain, and then we can then make changes 
in an offline mode. So the command to read a domain is read domain. And I'm going to do help on this, and it's very simple. It just takes the fully qualified path to the domain directory. So let's go ahead and do that now. So we'll do read domain, and then our domain home is... Okay, so notice that the path changed. It's, it now reads offline slash WLST underscore domain. This means that I'm at the domain configuration, the offline domain config MBean hierarchy. Now, when I'm in an offline mode and I'm connected to this hierarchy, I can make, I can make edits um, without having to obtain a lock and edit session if I were actively connected to an admin server. And we'll, we'll go into that in more detail once we actually do an online uh, connection. Okay, so as I mentioned, that mBeans are organized in a hierarchy, and they're organized like a file system. There are disks, then there are directories, and files. So think of the mBean hierarchy, this WLST underscore domain hierarchy, as, as a volume or disk. And then within this, there are directories and files. So you can actually do an LS or a listing in here, and it will list all the contents of the disk or the MBN hierarchy. <clears throat> and you can see here that it's organized by directories and then by files. Now, a directory represents another sub hierarchy uh, or a set of MBNs. And so you can see here we have credential and embedded LDAP, key store, node manager properties, security, security configuration, and server and startup group config. So each one of these represents a server MBean type. And if we were to change directory into those directories, into one of those directories, and did a listing, we should see instances of those MBean types. And then down here, these are these files represent attributes of the parent mbean, which in this case is the domain. So you can see here that the domain has attributes, and there's one here called admin server name, called admin server. So this just identifies the name of the admin server to the domain. And here's one that you've seen before, administration port. And so this was a domain level default attribute, and the default here is 9002. So aside from attributes, um, when we're connected to an admin server over WLST and we've got an online and we're connected to the online domain runtime or domain, domain config and being hierarchy, not only will we see attributes listed um, when we do a listing here, but we'll see operations as well. So mbeans can define not only attributes, but operations for performing certain functions. And WebLogic has an excellent MBean reference, and there's a link in the lab guide at the very end of the document in the references section that will take you to the MBean reference guide. And it lists all the various MBean hierarchies and all the associated MBean types. And it's, it's a sea of information, so it's easy to get lost. Okay, so let's experiment with navigating around this MBean hierarchy. If you recall, I'm going to scroll up here, that there was a server directory. And this represents the server MBean type. And if we change directory to this directory, if we change directory to server, we should see a list of all the servers in the domain. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. And the syntax for change directory is just like you would do in... Um, it behaves in a similar manner as, as it would in OS X or Linux or Windows. Uh, however, the syntax is all Python based. So I got up the function is CD and I got to pass in my parameter, which is just the name of the directory server. Then I can do a listing in here and you can see that I have one directory and that directory is the admin server. So go ahead and change to the admin server directory and do a listing in here again. Okay. So I've got to, I've got to scroll up a little bit here. 
But if you take a look, look at all the attributes for the admin server, some of these should be awfully familiar to you. And it's alphabet, by default, it's alphabetical order. So you can see that the administration port is zero, which means it's undefined. So anything that you would see in the admin console, you would see here. Okay, so you can see that listen address has been defaulted to all local addresses and that listen port is the default 7001. So let's go ahead and change the default listen address and listen port and there's two ways to do this. The first way to do it is use the set function from WLST and the set function takes two parameters. It takes the name of the attribute and the value for that attribute that you want it to be, that you want to change. So, this, like I said, it's very simple. So we're going to set, and then we'll change the listen address to demo A. Okay. So we can also do a get to return the value for an attribute. Oh, we haven't saved it yet. So we actually have to update the domain. So right now, all of our changes are in memory. So if I were to update the, the domain, and you can use the update domain command to do this, this will persist any changes to the domain. And now I can do get listen address. And there's demo A. So you can use set and get to set a value for an attribute and to get that value for that attribute. Now, there's another method and I mentioned this in the lecture and it's called the currently managed object or CMO for short. So when you're changing directories or navigating your MB hierarchy, like we're doing here using the CD command, and by the way, there's other ways to navigate. You can use the get MB command to, to get an object by searching for it based off of a name or a path. But in this case, whenever we change directories within an MB hierarchy, whatever directory we are in, is what the CMO or the currently managed object represents. So when I change directory to the admin server, the CMO is the admin server. It's almost like using, if you're familiar with programming in Java, it's like this, the this object, which represents the, the instance of the class that you're in. So I can do CMO and then CMO defines operations. And by default, out of the box, CMO will define setters and getters for all of the attributes for an MBean instance. And so I can do set, I can do CMO.set, and then the name of the attribute, and this is all camel case. So it's going to be listen. Actually, let's just do this. Let's do a CMO.get so you can see the CMO.get listen address. No parameters and hit enter, and it returns demo A. So I can use the setter method to set the listen port. So let's go ahead and change the listen port. And the lab wants us to change it to 7,011. So we're going to pass in. And by the way, this is a numeric value, so I'm not going to specify uh, any quotes. Go ahead and hit enter. And that's it. So we don't get a response back. That means it was, it was executed correctly. Now, in order for the changes to persist, to get updated in the domain itself, we, we, we have to run update domain and hit enter. <clears throat> Typically what I'll do is if I've, um, if I've got a script and I'm running through a bunch of, of edits and changes, what I'll do is, is every now and then I will run an update domain command so my changes are, are saved. That way if the script fails, you know, I don't lose everything. Um, but I have to, I, but maybe that's a good thing. Maybe you wanted to treat it like a transaction. So if the script fails and I don't update my domain, then everything is rolled back. Okay, go ahead and exit the domain and exit WLST. 